Good afternoon, Year 10, and welcome to your first literary lecture. In today's lecture, I'll be teaching you Poppies by Jane Weir, one of the 15 poems that are included in the AQA GCSE Power and Conflict Anthology. In today's lecture, we'll be talking about the key themes and ideas in the poem, the context of the poem, I'll be carrying out some detailed analysis of language, form and structure. Today's lecture is intended to be somewhat interactive, so we need to cover a couple of logistics before we get started. Please can you make sure that you have in front of you a few things. Firstly, you need a pen and a, or a pencil. Secondly, you need a copy of your GCSE Power and Conflict Anthology or a copy of the poem. And thirdly, you'll need some lined paper for your exercise book. As we progress through the lecture today, I will pose a number of questions to you. When I pose those questions to you, I'd like you to pause the video and take 10 or 12 minutes to carry out the analytical questions in your exercise books, just like we would in class. I'll be covering a significant amount of content. So it's important that you digest each section and complete your questions as you go. Once you've completed these questions, you should submit them and show my homework for your teacher's review. Right, let's get started. I'm going to start by reading the poem to you. As I'm reading it to you, I'd like you to think about the intonation and the stress that I put on particular words or stanzas within the poem. This will help with your analysis of language, structure and form. Poppies by Jane Weir, written in 2009. Three days before Armistice Sunday, and poppies had already been placed on individual war graves. Before you left, I pinned one onto your lapel. Crimped petals, spasms of paper red, disrupting a blockade of yellow bias binding around your blazer. Sellotape bandaged around my hand, I rounded up as many white cat hairs as I could, smoothed down the shirt's upturned collar, steeled the softening of my face. I wanted to graze my nose across the tip of your nose, play it being Eskimos like we did when you were little. I resisted the impulse to run my fingers through the gelled black thorns of your hair. All my words, flattened, rolled, turned into felt, slowly melting. I was brave as I walked with you to the front door, threw it open, the world overflowing like a treasure chest. A split second and you were away, intoxicated. After you'd gone, I went into your bedroom, released a songbird from its cage. Later, a single dove flew from the pear tree, and this is where it led me, skirting the churchyard walls, my stomach busy making tucks, darts, pleats, hatless without a winter coat or reinforcements of scarf, gloves. On reaching the top of the hill, I traced the inscription on the war memorial leaned against it like a wishbone. The dove pulled freely against the sky, an ornamental stitch. I listened, hoping to hear your playground voice catching on the wind. I'm going to start by describing briefly what is the poem about. So the poem is about a mother who is describing her son leaving home. The poem's about the mother's emotional reaction to her son leaving. She feels sad, lonely and scared for his safety. In the poem she describes helping him to smarten his uniform ready to leave and after he leaves he goes to places that remind her of him, desperately trying to find any trace of him. It's important before we get into the analysis of language, form and structure, that we understand why this poem is written, why Jane Weir wrote this poem. 
when you're completing your analytical, pa analytical paragraphs, you will need to weave in contextual information. Contextual information really simply just means what do we know about either the poet or what was happening at the time that the poet was writing that is reflected in the subject and the key themes within the poem. And that's what I'm going to talk you through now. Poppies was published in 2009 and it was published as part of a collection of war poetry called Exit Wounds. Uh, this piece of war poetry was commissioned by the poet laureate Caroline Duffy at the time for the Guardian newspaper. Uh, it was a response uh, to the war that was uh, ongoing in Afghanistan um, at that time. In several of the poems within the GCSE Power and Conflict Anthology, we hear about the perspective of war from the front line uh, and from a male perspective. And when we think of war poetry, we might typically think of names like Wilfred Owen and Lord Tennyson, and those those names, those uh, male uh, names, uh, come uh, quite quickly uh, to, to our lips. In Poppies, Jane Weir's intention is to convey the grief and loss that war creates from a female perspective. And in doing so, this is a, a political act. She has um, a particular intent. Uh, there's something that she wants to challenge. And in this poem, what she's trying to do is provide a voice for the millions of, of, of women who um, over the years, uh, be it in, in the First World War, the Second World War, the war in Iraq, in Afghanistan, have experienced um, profound loss uh, at home and, and enjoy endured their own kind of sacrifice, a different type of sacrifice possibly than the sacrifice a soldier makes on the front line in action. She's indicated um, and it has been commented that she has said, I was subliminally thinking of Susan Owen, the mother of Wilfred Owen, and families of soldiers killed in any war when I wrote this poem. This poem attempts on one level to address the female experience and is consciously a political act. She describes being really overwhelmed by the response uh, that she received across uh, readers to this publication in, in The Guardian. Many of the readers who contacted her were mothers of soldiers that had been killed in recent conflicts. She commented in an interview that and I'll put this on the screen for you. I wrote the piece from a woman's perspective, which is quite rare, as most poets who write about war have been men. As the mother of two teenage boys, I tried to put across how I might feel if they were fighting in a war. I'd read in the newspapers, seen on TV, the verdicts from the inquest on soldiers killed in Iraq. In Iraq. Who could forget the harrowing testimonies of the soldiers' families and in particular their mothers. And I was angry and frustrated at the apathy, or what I perceived as voicelessness, and the inability to be heard. The second piece of context I'd like to draw your attention to is Armistice Sunday. In the opening of the poem, Armistice Sunday is referenced. Armistice Sunday began as a way of marking the end of the First World War in 1918. And Jane Weir has commented that Poppies is a poem of remembrance. And it's remembering not just the soldiers when they're, when they're dead, but also as they were alive and as active as the boy in Poppies. The third piece of context that I'd like to draw your attention to is what Jane Weir does for a living outside of writing poetry. She's a very creative woman, uh, woman and she runs her own textile and design business. Uh, textiles really simply just means uh, uh, fabrics. And we can see her draw on this experience working with fabric and working with textiles and design in poppies where she describes or creates metaphors that reference either the fabric she uses within her design or the actual process of making fabric. 
and we'll see that in the body of the poem. At this point in the lecture, I'd like you to pause the video and watch this short clip. In this clip, Jane Weir herself talks about her poem and why she wrote the poem. As you watch the video, which is a few minutes long, I'd like you to summarise three pieces of contextual information. Please pause now. Moving on. It's really important when you're creating your argument and your and your thoughtful points in answering an exam question. You think about big themes and ideas. And I'd like to bring that to life to you before we get into the detailed analysis of language, because themes and ideas will really set the direction for your argument and your really thoughtful points. I'm going to start with quite a challenging idea, which is that of intimacy and touch. Touch is essential to our well-being from the time that we're babies when we're held as a babe in arms you know through through to being an adult um you know having that that human connection uh, be it a hug or a, an arm on the shoulder uh, it's so important to to us as humans it's how we uh, transmit meaning care love and affection and when we no longer have that that physical touch it can be agonizing. In poppies, we see how the mother finds meaning through touch. And we see that through the tactile uh, references to um, touch, to things that she, she touches within the poem. From the initial moment when she pins the poppy on her son, uh, to her impulse to graze her nose against the tip of your nose, and um, to her extended use of fabrics. When we think of fabrics, and you can almost imagine yourself in, in a shop, you might pick up um, a pair of jeans or, or a top or a scarf, and you, you feel that fabric. It's that touch uh, that might make you possibly buy or not buy that piece of fabric. And here she uses fabric um, as a metaphor for her ability to absorb or deal with, with grief and, and loss within her body. The second key idea that I'd like you to think about is is grief and loss, because that's a, a, a recurrent sort of theme and idea in the poem. And I'd like you to think about what do we lose or what does a person lose when their partner, their son, their daughter goes to war or or, or leaves home and grows up. And that idea of, of loss um, and, and grief. I'd like you to think about the idea of maternal instinct and how powerful that maternal instinct can be in shaping our behaviour and our actions and our feelings. What do parents sacrifice to enable their children to become independent? quite a challenging um, theme or, or, or an idea um, to think about. You know, what, what are your parents sacrificing right now at age 15 as you're growing up? What do you, it might be an interesting conversation to have with them. And finally, sort of encapsulating all those points, why does Jane Weir want us to remember those that on the domestic front, so domestic being at home, you know, what does she want us to remember um, or consider from a female perspective? Okay, I'm going to summarise those ideas and some questions on the board. You might want to pause the video now and make a few key notes on those key themes and ideas. Moving on, we're going to get now into the